the future of Metro Manila. And of course, Direct Joey Reyes asked me when I told him what my topic was, he said, is there a future of our Metro Manila? And I think for most of us, that's the sense, right? When I tell you what is the future of Metro Manila, the first thing you're going to think about is, is there a problem? I'm being told to step back. Okay. It's how do we solve side? Is this good? We're good. Okay. Is how do we solve these problems? Is there a future when all, we have all of these problems? It's tough, tough to live in Metro Manila because you know, we get floods. Uh, we've got illegal settlements, usually in very dangerous places, right? in waterways and all of that. Uh, severe poverty. We've got um, no sidewalks and unsightly power lines in all of these places, even in the, even in the more upscale places of, of the city. And we have lots of traffic. Thing is, though, I've been cheating you. The pictures I've been showing you are pictures of other cities. That was Bangkok, and that was Jakarta. This is Tokyo. And it's not responding to me. That is Bangalore. So the situation we have in Metro Manila is not uniquely Metro Manila's. We share this with 100,000 other cities around the world. Right? Because you are living in an urban planet. Every week, every three weeks, a population the size of the population of Rio moves into cities. And Metro Manila is one of the top 20 megacities in the world. This is the trajectory of these cities. Right? Tokyo is the granddaddy with about 32 million now, soon to be by 2050, about 36 million. And Metro Manila, which now is at 17th, will climb up to 14th place, still not in the big guns, but up in the top 20, with about 15 million. It could be higher than that because these predictions are hard, but certainly we're going to be, be there. And we share these challenges with the rest of the cities that are also experiencing this. So... The thing with problems is, if you don't know what the question or what the, what the problem is, you may come up with the wrong solution. Right? So find X, there it is. What's the problem of the city? And if you frame that problem wrong, then you will be solving for the wrong thing. The city, so one question first is, what is the city? Right? Is it the buildings? Is it the roads that you see? Is it, uh, is it the government? or the 17 governments we deal with in Metro Manila, which, by the way, is not unique. Right? The city is this very exciting thing. The thing that makes a city different is the sheer number of people in it. It is dense. It, uh, it, this density of, is, provides meeting a lot of new strangers. It provides a space for serendipity, right? the encounters of people you don't know. It po provides a place to reinvent yourself. And in fact, lots of people move to the city if you are from the provinces and you came to study um, for college into Manila or any other big city, it's a chance to reinvent yourself. So the city is a place with all of these energies, right? The, this density that we have, it is, it is the buildings that go up because this is all of the property and the demand for housing. But it is more than that. It provides places for audiences to come together and experience the same things and to be fed by artists. Right? There would, the cities are where artists grow because there is audience and there's free expression. It's also a space for street art, right? formal and street art, the kind of art that you see both in galleries and along the streets. Cities provide that free expression. They also provide a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurship right? because there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, um, there are people who are going to buy whatever you start and maybe you can succeed. It provides handholds for moving up and moving out. Right? Cities, someone said, are where ideas have sex because you encounter new ideas that you wouldn't if you were living not in the city. And this has produced this. 70% of the world's economy is driven by cities. 70% on very small pieces of land relative to the size of the globe. It's the same thing in Metro Manila. Metro Manila is 2% of the total land area 
of the Philippines, and yet it punches at 30% of the GDP. If you saw the numbers earlier, Tokyo by itself, Tokyo's economy alone, would rank among the top five economies of the world. Cities do this. They take innovation and turn it their engines of the economy, both locally and globally. And a lot of that is not just in the high rises. A lot of that is along the streets with the fruit sellers and the vendors. A lot of that are in these makeshift um, stores that you will see. One thing, if you, you walked around and looked at informal settlements, there are two things that you might want to see. Either you can see the poverty, or if you'll notice in the edges, in the esquinitas of informal settlements, you will find store after store after store because there is entrepreneurial energy in this. That alone in particular. So this, I'm, not, I'm very pretty bad at French, so forgive my pronunciation. Uh, in the French, a, a guy who is Maguilas uh, is called Adebrulard. I think I said that right. And this represents System D is the informal economy of the total of the world. If you took all of that, the OECD says it represents half the workers of the world, 1.8 billion people. And the total value, if you aggregate it around the world, is $10 trillion, which would put it as the second largest economy in the world, second only to the US at $14 trillion, bigger than China, if you took all of that informal settlements. And this doesn't happen in the rural areas. This happens in cities. So what are cities, right? Cities are complex, dynamic systems of, of, of cause and effect, uh, creating more emergent properties. It's very hard to encompass a city. Cities, as all uh, complex adaptive systems, are where butterflies, the flutter of a butterfly, can lead to a hurricane. Right? So when we think of problems of the city and we think of solutions, we have to be very careful that we understand what it is we're dealing with. And so many cities have been damaged by grand plans to solve the wrong problem. So there is a danger when we think about the future of the city and we try, when we don't understand what a city is. Here's a few examples. This is Plan Voicin by Le Corbusier. He, he's a, one of the modernist architects, proposed to destroy huge parts of the first and fourth arrondissement, which in his time were horrible places and replace them with these tall towers because you wanted to control the city. Well, thankfully, that the plan didn't happen because one of the areas was, was Le Marais, which is the, one of the most energetic places of Paris now, and the center of the LBTG culture. And it's where art flourishes, and that would have been destroyed if the plans came through. Some plans came through. Here's one. This is Brasilia, a planned city. Because people think cities are so messy that let's solve it. You've heard that idea. Let's build a new city somewhere where we can have order. Well, Brasilia was built out of whole cloth from nothing. And it's shaped like a plane, like a bird. What happened while they were building it, if you see at the edges was, as they were building it, the real city grew around it. Illegal settlements started coming up because you needed people to build these structures. And here on the edge, this is Ceylandia. Right, which has more population than Brasilia itself. That was created because there were more people coming to the city, and it's not as orderly or controlled, and yet that is the real city. So within 20 years since they built, in the, they built in the 60s, by the 70s and 80s, they needed to move people out uh, from the illegal settlements. And this is what the place looks like. Right? Uh, if you live in Ceylandia, you take the bus into Brasilia, and this is what the bus stations look like. Here's another one, Islamabad. Again, grand design, big wide boulevards, an orderly place. Well, next to it is a small town called Rawalpindi, or at least it was small when they started. And Rawalpindi is where the workers who work in the government in Islamabad, the national capital, live. And it is not a, an orderly place. Right? If you zoom in, this is what Rawalpindi looks like. And yet, that is where the life of the city is. In fact, these two cities, if you ask people what life, life is like, well, people go to sleep by 11 p.m. in Islamabad, and Brasilia is lifeless, they say. But Rawalpindi and Ceylandia are not. This is how people from Ceylandia go to Islamabad, and they ride these buses. Is that familiar? The expressions of creativity. 
that you get. So, the question is, once we start understanding a city, if it's a complex dynamic system where you don't know what switches another, what do we do about it? Is there something we can do? We've seen grand plans fail. If a city is a complex dynamic system where the flutter of a butterfly's wings can create hurricanes, what should we do? Very simple. Pay attention to the butterflies. And that, what cities essentially are, are people. It's you, it's children, it's you and your friends, it is your social networks. And the young girl likes to say this. A city that is sweet to its people, uh, uh, that is, the city that is sweet to its people, and the, sit, the people will be sweet to the city. And that's what we need to work at in Metro Manila. So I've got a bit of a cop-out. I'm actually not going to tell you what the future of Metro Manila is. I will tell you who the future of Metro Manila depends on. What we do here instead, bawal ang tao dito. And that's represented in the way we do things, where there's very little space left to the pedestrian. Harriet uh, Tregoning, the planner of DC, says the pedestrian is the, um, is the indicator species for livable communities. You take care of the pedestrian and your city does well. The problem we have is our decision makers, all of us, the elite, most of you probably, see the city behind the windshield. And so we experience it that way. I was telling the director, yes, the big billboards are because the audience for the billboard are not people who are walking, it's the audience is people in cars. And we live at that pace without really understanding what is happening to the city. So going back to this quotation, which I'm sure you thought of was, Metro Manila, was actually about London in the 19th century where they had grown to 3 million people and the world had never seen cities of 3 million. It was too crowded. They were saying, we need to move people out. We need to destroy this city. Well, that was when there were 3 million. London is now 8 million people. And there are lots of people who tried to solve London. This is Christopher Wren's plan for the city. Tear down large parts of it, establish order. There were lots of other plans. Thankfully, they never happened. Because what happened instead in London was they paid attention to the street and the walls between the streets and the experience of the pedestrian. And it's one of the best places to live now. And if London can do it, there's no reason why we can't. Because cities are complex dynamic systems. They change very, they have the ability to change very, very rapidly. This is Jane Jacobs. Uh, she was an unknown writer. In fact, she was a stenographer. She didn't have a master's degree. And she challenged the ideas of urban planning uh, led by Robert Moses who wanted to build infrastructure in New York, and she basically prevented them from tearing down Greenwich. And Jane jo Jacobs wrote a book, even without a degree, uh, that, uh, The Death and Life of Great American Cities, that has been the, the anchor of a lot of thinking on cities. She said this about cities. She said, cities have the cap capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. So, we need to take back our cities. This is from Parking Day that started in 2005 in Portland and spread to many other cities. And what they did was they take parking for a day and establish a small park in it right, to show that the city is not about cars. The city is about people. And so there's an opportunity to take back cities. It's a tour of the fireflies, increasingly growing, to make it about people so that we can take care of the butterflies. So... What do we need to do about the future of Metro Manila? Like I said, it's a couple. I don't know what the future of Metro Manila is. I do know who it depends on. Because essentially, you are the city. Your experience of the city will define where it will go. It's not dependent on government alone. It's dependent on you as a citizen. There are no cities without citizens. And with that, I thank you very much.